Social distancing, does it seem extreme? I mean, why at this particular moment in the US? Let me show you the reality of the situation using some numbers and visuals to explain why it's vital that we need to act now, along with reviewing the surprising and vital role that children may be playing in the COVID chaos that no one's really talking about. You don't wanna miss this. If it's your first time here, I'm Dr. Maj. Consider subscribing to this channel for up-to-date medical topics, news, and headlines. Today's date is March 18th, 2020. This is vital to note because what I may be discussing today may change tomorrow, given the rapidly changing trajectory of the situation. Right now, the COVID-19 is hitting us at an exponential speed. Initially, it's gonna be slow, but then it will hit us like a ton of bricks. So it's imperative that we take this seriously now so that we can avoid the avalanche that is on its way tomorrow. Now, I know it's easy to think, are we overreacting? The truth is we have data from other affected countries before us to give us a clue as to how this virus behaves. And we need to play it very smart and strategically to halt this thing before it hits us. So what is social distancing? Well, the World Health Organization formally declared the COVID-19 a worldwide pandemic on March 11, 2020. Unfortunately, it's too late to contain and eliminate it, but what we can do is to slow and postpone its spread over time, which is still really huge. Social distancing is a term used by epidemiologists and public health officials to curb the spread of highly contagious diseases. The CDC or Center for Disease Control defines it as remaining out of congregate settings, avoiding mass gatherings, and maintaining distance of approximately six feet or two meters from others when at all possible. It is less restrictive than a quarantine or isolation, which is often used as last resort or for people who are actually infected. This is because the COVID-19 virus is spread person to person via touch or releasing droplets through the air, through our cough or our sneeze. In order for it to spread, we need to be close to each other in vicinity, specifically six feet or two meters. In my last video here, I reviewed the case fatality rate or CFR of this virus. Note, I mentioned that the more people we test and the more mild cases we catch, the lower that CFR will be, remember? The World Health Organization reported a CFR of 3.4% globally for COVID-19. And with each day I've been following the numbers in the US, it's been declining gradually from about 2 to 3% to now 1.3% as of today, with 97 deaths and 7,038 cases reported. Now there's another statistical number that you should be aware of. I know I mentioned in my last video not to obsess over them, but this one is really simply for your overall awareness of the situation. It's called r naught. It's the number of people that you would infect if you had the virus. For the flu, that's between 1.2 to 1.3 people. But for this COVID-19 virus, it's almost three. So if you catch the virus, you'd infect on average three other people. And those three people would infect three others each, reaching nine total. And then those nine would end up infecting 27. And those 27 would infect 81 others and etc. So you can see how this quickly becomes an exponential number. Note that as of March 18th, we had about 7,000 positive cases and these people would end up infecting about 21,000 people now. Now with social distancing, we can slow this process down significantly as long as each and every one of us is on the same page. This slowing is often referred to as flattening the curve, a term that you may have been hearing on the news lately, which means preventing the large peak of infections by spreading it out more slowly through time. This is really vital. Why? Because it will avoid overwhelming hospitals and will help to preserve the number of ventilators so that doctors don't have to decide who gets the ventilator and who dies like they've had to do in other countries like Italy and Iran. And it allows scientists to learn more about how this beast behaves and allows the time to develop a vaccine and possible treatment for this. Note that as soon as the city of Wuhan went on a lockdown, the number of cases finally started to decline for the first time. We need to learn from their experience and start the process earlier. This is an excellent reason for why social distancing is not simply a recommendation, it's an absolute must. So this means skipping public transportation if at all possible, like carpools and Uber and subways and ride shares, etc. Non-essential travel, your children's after school and sports activities, play dates, concerts, 
sports games, festivals, fairs. The CDC recommendation as of March 15 was to cancel and postpone events that consist of 50 people or more for the next eight weeks. Large restaurants and bars get takeout instead. So you can still give them the business, but take it home. Visit grocery store at lower crowd times like evenings. Be quick and intentional and prepared. No strolls in the malls and keep six feet away from others. And work from home if you can. I know the psychosocial and economic impact of some of these changes are immense. And right now, immeasurable. I mean, we still don't have an idea of how much it's really affecting us. We especially need to support these businesses and go over and beyond once the restrictions are left lifted and the CDC gives us the okay to do so. But at the least, we will stay alive. I'll say this, if we are failing to significantly socially distance ourselves collectively as a nation and as soon as possible in order to flatten out the curve, the next step is lockdown, where we will be forced to stay in. I don't think we want that. I'll take social distancing over lockdown any day. So why are there school closures when kids are so low risk, you may be wondering. Now school closures are not snow days. I know that I've probably lost all of you in Southern California on that one especially, but just listen on. Social distancing applies to kiddos as well, not just the adults. So most healthy kids tend to exhibit the mildest of cases. This is the most absolute blessing that has arrived from this nasty virus. Children may present with a transient fever or a mild cough or symptoms similar to a cold even. The illness may resolve more quickly in kids. It's a bit of a mystery and we don't really know why, but we can argue that it's often the same type of thing with other bugs like the chicken pox or mumps, if you recall. Kids present mildly, but adults tend to really suffer if they've had it. Perhaps their immune system is not as robust as adults, so it doesn't really respond as aggressively as ours would. Either way, most healthy children are often carriers. Even though they may present with little symptoms, they can still spread it to others. This now may be even more dangerous of a situation than the rest of us. While we may assume that they have a simple cold, allow them to have contact with their grandparents and friends. Meanwhile, they can pass on the COVID-19 without it being even a thought in our minds. This is a reason to avoid play dates, large gatherings, and parties for children during this crucial time period. As difficult as it may be to have to deal with children who claim that they are bored, and as a mom of two rambunctious, high energy eight year olds, I can totally empathize. Trust me, I mean, I'm just trying to figure out what in the world I'm gonna do with my girls for the next four weeks while school is closed, and they say maybe even more. If you can relate to this, please give this video a like. But guess what? Boredom yields creativity. It's healthy for them to experience boredom, and without screen use, might I add. More on that on a future video. Note. The virus has been suspected to live on contaminated surfaces and objects for up to nine days. Please avoid playgrounds, monkey bars, and play structures. If for some reason you still decide to hold a play date with another child, despite these recommendations, then at least make certain that all the children and the family involved do not have any cold or flu symptoms and have them play outside, but not at a public park or space and consider biking or using a scooter where they can maintain a six feet distance from each other and make sure that they wash their hands upon leaving and returning into the home. And if they enter the house, disinfect doorknobs, table surfaces, elevator buttons, keyboard, mouses, toilets, faucet knobs, etc. if they end up playing in the house. There are two extreme perceptions of this coronavirus chaos that are both very concerning. First, if you or those around you are not infected and maybe feel somewhat unnatural to get too excited about it. And I understand that. So you go about your daily life as if nothing's really happening. Or on the other hand, you may be totally freaked out of your mind and hoarding all the much needed toilet paper in this country. If you're doing that, please stop. Get what you need, but don't strip out the shelves. There is a happy medium between absolute denial and frantic panicking. I know you will find that spot for yourself. If you found the information valuable, which is always my goal, give it a like and hit that red subscribe button along with that notification bell next to it so that you don't miss any of my future videos. And please feel free to share it with someone else who may find it useful. Well, thanks for tuning in. Stay safe and I'll catch you next time.